Have you ever heard of liquid metal? No? Well, that's coming right up. Well, we're at the 2018 WCX, and I'm at the Liquid Metal Technology booth, and this is Dan, and he knows more about liquid metal than, uh, just unbelievable. Dan, why liquid metal? What's up with that? Well, liquid metal is special because it's an amorphous metal alloy, and that's different than any other metal alloy. Most say, All right, say that again. It's an uh, amorphous, amorphous metal, metal alloy. alloy. I never heard of amorphous metal alloy, so this is interesting. Okay, tell us more about that. Well, most metals have a crystalline grain structure, and this alloy was developed to not have a crystalline grain structure. That was developed by Caltech and NASA, so this is a very scientific, high-tech material. And so what uh, the amorphous characteristic of the microstructure does for the material is give it special properties. One is this material is twice as strong as titanium, so it's very strong. It's very hard, so people who understand it has a 53 HRC hardness, so that rivals that of a hardened alloy steel. So even though it's very strong and very hard, it's also elastic, like a plastic, and that's what the amorphous structure does for the material. Um, the, another advantage of the material is that it has a relatively low melting temperature. So we use an injection molding process to make parts. Um, and what we do is we actually take a raw material to melt it. We don't use polymers and binder, binders that are used in other metal injection molding processes. It's the raw material that's melted and injected directly into the mold. And it has a very low shrinkage rate as well. So we can get net shaped parts right out of the mold. So you get net shape parts to full physical characteristics right out of the mold. You don't have to do heat treating, surface finishing, or anything like that. It's the metal alloy itself that has all the properties that you'll need. Uh, I think I'm beginning to get the picture here that we've got some sort of a uh, super metal going on here. So how long has it been around? This has been around for many years, actually. Um, they made cell phone parts and things like that in South Korea for a number of years with a different manufacturing platform. Uh, but it just didn't work very well, so they came back to the U.S., redesigned the machine. So in the last few years, we have uh, a brand new machine where it melts under vacuum. It's, the injection is done under vacuum, so you get a very high, highly pure part um, with no um, impurities or anything like that in the material. So you get very repeatable parts uh, of mechanical properties. So Dan, what are some of the other advantages of a uh, material like this? There are a lot of advantages of this particular material. One is that the material doesn't shrink much in the mold. So you, the part basically replicates the mold exactly. One of the things that that does is if you have a polished mold, you get a polished part right out of the mold. So that's a huge advantage of people who are spending a lot of money uh, polishing parts and doing surface treatment uh, in post-processing. The other, as I said, is you can get net shaped parts out of the mold. Mm -hmm. We can hold dimensional tolerances down to eight ten thousandths of an inch. And so, you know, this little sale sample is an example of that, of where these parts come from two different cavities of a four cavity mold. And even though you have these flat sections a certain distance from a pivot point, you can hook them together and they'll fit line to line and they'll maintain their L shape as well. So as far as an injection molding process goes, that's not something you can normally do because as a part cools or you're heat treating, you get deformation and, and warpage and stuff like that. Uh, this material replicates the mold exactly and you can get, uh, like I said, a net shape part right out of the mold. This really sounds like a wonder, a wonder material. Uh, so do we see this in uh, applications now? Yeah, we, um, we have uh, production um, medical device parts that we're doing. You know, you can imagine a part like this where it has contoured shapes and geometry, and if you try to machine this uh, out of anything else, that would be nearly impossible to do. So now you can use an injection molding process to get the geometry similar to a plastic injection molded part, but the physical characteristics of a hardened alloy steel. Yeah, now that to me seems very, very important. Now, we've all probably uh, had a plastic part uh, that, that broke because under stress or something like that. Now exactly. we, could, we could do it with, with metal and solve those, those types of problems. Absolutely. So one of the things that really caught my eye uh, was this. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and so I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about that and, uh, and, and why, that is, why that's here. Okay, what we have here is something that shows the difference between uh, a material that has a crystalline grain structure and a material that is amorphous. So on your right here is a titanium plate that has a crystalline grain structure, and on the other side is a liquid metal plate that's amorphous. 
And as I drop these steel balls onto the plates, you will see a difference in how it reacts. So on the titanium plate, since it has a grain structure, every time that ball hits, you're getting a little bit of a dislocation of those grains, and that absorbs the energy of the ball. Versus the liquid metal plate, the ball just keeps bouncing because you're not getting those dislocations, and, you do, and it also shows the elasticity of the material as well. Well, I mean, that was definitely an awesome demonstration. I could see the difference. Absolutely. So what, um, what advantages are we showing here in a practical application? Well, in practical applications, it's, it's showing that, that the materials are different. It's just kind of a, a, a physical thing to show the materials are different. If you're looking at a material externally, you can't really tell one's amorphous, one's got grain structure. So it's just a way to show that materials are physically different. So another difference is that the material being amorphous, it is more transparent to RF signals than a, a component with crystalline grain structure. So you could create uh, an electronic housing and transmit a signal through a metal housing and that's not something you could do before. You'd always have to make housings out of plastic because plastics don't have a grain structure as well. So. Well, I'm beginning to get the idea that this, this technology is something that we really need today uh, with, with all of the, the different things that we have, uh, the different uh, t types of technology that we're all learning to live with at this point in time. So, uh, okay, Dan, here's the hardest question of all. Okay. <laughs> How can we all find out more about liquid metal? Well, you can go on liquidmetal.com, that's our website. Um, you can download our, our, our design guide. You can sign up for webinars that we have um, on a repeatable basis. So there are a lot of ways to get in contact with Liquid Metal and uh, learn more about our material and our manufacturing process. Awesome. So we'll put that information in the video description down below. So uh, if you have questions and stuff for these guys, uh, go ahead and leave comments as well, right? So you can answer the questions that I certainly am not going to be able to do. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. Uh, liquid metal. Um, who knew?